The Light Princess, Part 11. At last he could bear it no longer. Princess, said he. But at that moment up started the princess, crying, I'm afloat, I'm afloat. And the little boat bumped against the stone. Princess, repeated the prince, encouraged by seeing her wide awake and looking eagerly at the water. Well, said she without looking around, your papa promised that you should look at me and you haven't looked at me once. Oh, did he? Then I suppose I must. But I'm so sleepy. Oh, sleep then, darling, and don't mind me, said the poor prince. Really, you are very good, replied the princess. I think I'll go to sleep again. Just give me a glass of wine and a biscuit first, said the prince very humbly. With all my heart, said the princess, and gaped as she said it. She got the wine and the biscuit, however, and leaning over the side of the boat towards him, she was compelled to look at him. Why, prince, he said, you don't look well. Are you sure you don't mind it? Not a bit, answered he, feeling very faint indeed. Only I shall die before it is of any use to you, unless I have something to eat. There then, she said, holding out the wine to him. Oh, you must feed me, I dare not move my hands. The water would run away directly. Good gracious, said the princess, and she began at once to feed him with bits of biscuits and sips of wine. As she fed him, he contrived to kiss the tips of her fingers now and then. She didn't seem to mind it one way or the other, but the prince felt better. Now for your own sake, princess, said he, I cannot let you go to sleep. You must sit and look at me, else I shall not be able to keep up. Well, I'll do everything I can to oblige you, she said with condescension, and sitting down, she did look at him, and kept look at him with wonderful steadiness considering all things. The sun went down, the moon rose, and gush after gush, the waters were rising up the prince's body. They were up to his waist now. Why can't we go and have a swim, said the princess. There seems to be water enough just about here. I shall never swim more, said the prince. Oh, I forgot, said the princess and was silent. So the water grew and grew and rose up and up on the prince and the princess sat and looked at him. She fed him now and then, and the night wore on. The waters rose and rose. The moon rose likewise higher and higher, and shone full on the face of the dying prince. The water was up to his neck. Will you kiss me, princess? said he feebly. The nonchalance was all gone now. Yes, I will, answered the princess and kissed him with a long, sweet, cold kiss. Now, said he with a sigh of content, I die happy. He did not speak again. The princess gave him some wine for the last time. He was past eating. And then she sat down again and looked at him. The water rose and rose. It touched his chin. It touched his lower lip. It touched between his lips. He shut them hard to keep it out. The princess began to feel strange. It touched his upper lip. He breathed through his nostrils. The princess looked wild. It covered his nostrils. Her eyes looked scared and shone strange in the moonlight. His head fell back. The water closed over it and the bubbles of his last breath bubbled up through the water. The princess gave a shriek and sprang into the lake. She laid hold first of one leg and then of the other and pulled and tugged, but she couldn't move either. She stopped to take breath and that made her think that he could not get any breath. She was frantic. She got hold of him and held his head above the water, which was possible now his hands were no longer on the hole. But it was of no use. He was past breathing. Love and water brought back all her strength. She got under the water and pulled and pulled with her whole might till at last she got one leg out. The other easily followed. How she got him into the boat she never could tell. But when she did, she fainted away. Coming to herself, she seized the oars, kept herself steady as best she could and rowed and rowed, though she had never rowed before, round rocks and over shallows 
and through mud she rode until she got to the landing stairs of the palace. By this time her people were on the shore, for they had heard her shriek. She made them carry the prince to her own room and lay him in her bed. She lit a fire and sent for the doctors. But the lake, your highness, said the chamberlain, who roused by the noise came in, in his nightcap. Oh, go and drown yourself in it, she said. This was the last rudeness of which the princess was ever guilty, and one must allow that she had good cause to feel provoked with the Lord Chamberlain. Had it been the king himself, he would have fared no better, for both he and the queen were fast asleep, and the chamberlain went back to his bed. Somehow the doctors never came, so the princess and her old nurse were left with the prince, but the old nurse was a wise woman and she knew what to do. They tried everything for a long time without success. The princess was nearly distracted between hope and fear, but she tried on and on, one thing after another, and everything over and over again. And at last, when they had all but given up, just as the sun rose, the prince opened his eyes. <laughs>